The opponent is blocking Anders' passing lane to this running player, but still Anders is going to pass the ball to this player at this very moment. The young Denmark pro player has the skill knowledge to open passing lanes without the ball being intercepted. Visit u7by.com and get some cheap, safe, and reliable FC coins and get yourself Team of the Year the 97 overpowered Erling Haaland. Use the discount code DRFC for 6% off. Link in the description. The Genius of the Game Anders Verge Gang. Today, we have a lot to learn from one of the best FC24 players on the planet. Let me first make this clear to you. We all know that Anders is the master of stepovers, and a lot of you guys think that he overused the skill move in each and every situation, but that's not true. I shall not ignore the fact that he uses the skill move. Yes, he used the skill move, but I will explain why he uses it and in certain situations and the logic behind him using the skill move. Anders is the one of the pro players who mastered and rely on the basics of the game. We shall not ignore the fact that sometimes he uses some fancy skills and tricks to break the defense. But in this video, I'm going to explain the number one rule of attacking basing on one of world's best, Anders. Some of the concepts he uses we have already covered them, and I will not repeat everything. I have linked those videos in the description, and some attacking tools like player triggering or to dribbling videos in the description. So drop that like button we start. So now. As I said, I will not repeat everything, but still I have to underline some of them briefly. The number one basic rule of attacking is gaining ground. If you have been following our videos, you understand the term gaining ground. Moving forward, you either move forward slow or fast. It depends on the situation and the opponent's skill level. To move forward is the main target while playing the game. And we consider the following. 1. Resistance. Let's begin if there's no resistance. When moving forward, you have to either dribble to the space forward or pass the ball to your open player forward. So if there's no resistance, it means that there's no opponent's defender blocking your player from moving forward, or there's no opponent's defender blocking that pass towards your player. Here you can easily move forward and quicker without facing any problem. And what if there's resistance, meaning there's a defender challenging your player in front, and here to move forward you risk and take on that defender one-on-one, -on -one, or you dodge him totally and play it safe. Or if that passing lane is blocked, here if you try to force this pass it will be intercepted, so here you can either fake some dribbles until that pass or space opens up, or you play it safe and either pass sideways or backwards. So here there's resistance challenging you from moving forward. What Anders mastered is the ability to beat the opponent's resistance in any situation, and that's what we gonna cover in this video. And the first way to beat resistance is observing the opponent's selected defender movements. Always keep your eyes on that selected defender and observe what's the opponent doing with that defender. If he's aggressively rushing towards your ball holder, then here you have to either pass the ball quickly to beat that pressure, passing the ball away either backwards or sideways. As I said, it doesn't matter even if you're moving forward slow or fast, as long as you're keeping possession. And here if the opponent is aggressive, we can use his aggression and open up space forward to gain ground by either using pass and move technique, sending the ball passer forward, leaving this defender behind and out of position, or dribbling safely and protect that ball. Here if the defender is aggressive and committed, if there's no any open passing lane, you turn around that defender, he will move out and open that space. But it happens if the opponent is aggressive, but if he's not aggressive, then you can use some simple side passes, or faking dribbles and trick the opponent to overcommit. Next is when the opponent is cutting passing lanes, here be more observant and either pass the ball to other options, or keep on dribbling until passing options opens up. Here the opponent is resisting you from moving forward quickly, because passing the ball you move forward quicker than dribbling. So he's resisting, but he's not applying pressure. Here there's no need to panic, and there's a logic which you can use to force your opponent to open that passing lane. Keep on watching this Anders FC24 Masterclass video I'm going to break it down. So attacking skill of observing the opponent's selected defender, it's very natural to Anders. Put in some practice and learn it. Here you can tell how the opponent is resisting or not, and how you can approach the situation. Another way to beat the resistance is expecting. Sometimes you have to understand how your opponent is going to resist by reading and understanding some scenarios. Playing this game at a level of pro against pro, you have to understand that sometimes the opponent will close up your options, and there's no need of wasting time waiting for the opponent to cut that pass and you react. No, this is a pro match. It means you have to be steps ahead of your opponent. So expecting begins with pressing, or being approached and pressured by the opponent's defender, if you know your opponent is good, there are some situations where he will press you. And even if you were the one defending that situation, it will be your defensive move. Because in defending, we have purposes which we have to fulfill. 
I will not explain defense purposes in attacking video. Good enough we have that tutorial. I have also dropped a link in the description. Check it out if you're interested. So sometimes expect that the opponent will press your player. And also expect your opponent sometimes will cut that obvious pass. Don't think that the opponent will just leave that open pass, he will block it. And if you expect that, you react fast and take other options without wasting time. But understand this. Distance of the opponent's defender to your options matters. Don't expect the opponent to pressure your ball holder when there's a big gap between that defender and your player. Or don't expect the opponent to cut that passing lane when there's a big gap between that passing lane and the opponent's defender. And even if he tries, he will reach late. So the distance matters a lot when expecting. Talking about quick reaction, this takes us to our next logic to beat that resistance when gaining ground. Observing two passing options that very moment. So here we go. As you expect, you have to view those two passing options. And here you expect the opponent to cut one pass at moment, because it's difficult to cut two passing options at the same time. So if you see the opponent covering one pass, then take the other. Pro player always see two to three steps ahead, and that's why they attack so perfectly without losing possession unnecessarily. The last way to beat resistance in Anders' favorite way is play style, and it has made him dominate the world's game. The opposite trigger. What do I mean by this term? There are some situations where you expect the opponent to press your player, approaching your ball holder, but you do the opposite, and you instead pass the ball. Or, next one is the main, and this is the secret logic Anders uses to open that passing lane. When the opponent expects you to pass the ball, but instead you dribble. Let me explain it more. That scenario when you have that open passing lane, a forward or sideways, but most especially forward pass. Here the opponent expects you to pass the ball. And indeed it's the defense purpose the opponent is supposed to fulfill that moment. So he will be passive and block this pass. Here Anders will instead dribble and fool the opponent. I know dribbling is so obvious in this situation, but here is a twist. He uses stepovers to fake that dribble. Stepovers has that speed boost, and the animation is very easy to read. Everyone knows that. So when he performs that step over, the opponent's mind is tricked that Anders is dribbling and he's no longer passing. Not only dribbling, but also with that speed boost because of that stepovers. So the opponent here is triggered to press this player, and that's when Anders passes the ball. He fakes that dribble with stepovers and pass the ball, and that's why it's called the opposite trigger. You do the opposite and trigger the opponent to press, then you take the obvious option. So let's have some two examples and see how these concepts connect to each other when attacking. Here Anders in white against Abamaka and black. He passes to his fullback and decides to switch sides. He controls the ball without any pressure. This pass to his striker is open and he expects his opponent to mark this player using this center back because he's close to that open player. But Anders observe and see that the opponent is pulling his midfielder back. So there's no resistance to this forward pass. He takes it to gain ground. Now he's facing resistance in terms of dribbling forward with this player. But at this moment Anders is visioning these two passing options, this midfielder running automatically forward to this open space because the back four is not well coordinated, and this striker. And this takes us to the concept of expecting the opponent to resist. And the way to resist is to cut these two passing lanes, which I told you it's very difficult. Anders trigger his striker to run forward to cause more problems to the opponent. Now he knows the opponent can only cover one pass. This is the concept of viewing two passing options at the same time. The opponent rushes to close the pass to the midfielder, but also realize the pass to the striker is open, so he pulls his defender back to cut the pass to the striker. Anders reads that and pass to his midfielder. Here he faces some resistance from the fullback, and this forces him to first dribble safe and protect the ball. He passes to his fullback inside the box. Now this pass is open, and Anders expects his opponent to close it. But remember the opposite trigger, he didn't rush this pass. This time he didn't use the stepovers, he takes some little dribblings. This triggers the opponent's mind to think that Anders will instead dribble forward, because the opponent cut the pass first. But when he realizes Anders is not passing the ball because of those little steps dribblings, he thinks that he will dribble forward, and that's why he's blocking this way forward. And Anders passed the ball to his striker Mbappe, controls the ball to change the game direction and score. We teach these logics on the channel, but some of you just ignore them because you want fancy overpowered mechanics, which is okay. But remember, by any day and time, basics will make you a better player if you master them. So I hope you liked the video. Just leave the like and we meet each other in the next video. Take care.